Well, hello there. Thanks for joining me uh, today. Uh, happy Friday to you. I hope you had a great Friday and a great week. And uh, hopefully we can end it on a fun uh, paint pouring demo. So uh, welcome to the uh, to the to all the fun. We've got Carla is here. Hey, Carla. Donna has joined us. Judy is here. Hey, Judy. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm so glad you could uh, make it. And Novala is here. All right. Hey, Novala LC. Susan is here. Hey, Susan. And we got Pat is in the house. So we've got a whole bunch of people. So this is fantastic. I am glad you could all join me. And uh, hopefully everything is going great in your uh, world. And um, I think this is going to be a, a really fun um, demo tonight. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. And actually, I don't know if I've ever actually done this before, but I'm going to be combining two different techniques. Um, one of my inner, uh, well, one of them is my favorite or one of my favorites. The other one I don't do all the time, but every time I do it, I really like it. So uh, without any suspense, I'm going to be doing a waterfall pour uh, combined with a split cup pour. So um, we'll get into exactly how I'll do that, but it should be an interesting painting, I hope. So, um, but uh, it's going to be at least a really fun experiment. And I can't uh, really remember. I'm sure I must have done this at one point, but I can't remember what the painting looked like. So it's going to be fun and exciting, I hope. So, hey, Nancy is with us. McLovin is here. Fantastic. We can get started now. Awesome. Hey, Robert. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, take a look at the colors we're going to use. I'm going to be going with a very... A rather simple uh, palette, and I wanted a lot of contrast to uh, set, accentuate the split cup um, effects. So I'm going to flip over here, and uh, we'll take a look at our color scheme. So I'm working on a 16 by 20 canvas, which is a pretty good size canvas, uh, but it should give us a lot of interesting, interesting results, I hope. So it's a very monochromatic a color scheme that I'm going to be doing. So uh, here is the split cup I'm going to be using. This is uh, one of my favorite ones. And uh, it's basically just a double-sided uh, water mug or something like that. It has a lid that came with it. But uh, it's a great split cup. The divider goes all the way to the top. So it uh, works perfect. And I really like the split cups to have just two sides. Uh, there are a million different ones out there now with uh, two sides, three sides, 20 sides, a million sides. Uh, I just pretty much stick to the super simple <laughs> one divider. And uh, uh, if you remind me, I'll go get the link. I just got this on Amazon. Uh, I'll throw the link in the uh, comments if you want to check it out uh, and get one for yourself. But this is a, I think it's about 14 ounces total, um, but a 16 by 20. Uh, I've, I've already, I've marked here it might be difficult to see that. I've put markings on my cup to tell me exactly how much I need to fill on each side. So I've got five and a five ounce line right here, and that's five ounces on each side of the cup. So 10 ounces total is what we need for a, a waterfall pour, which is basically like a straight pour or a ring pour. So I like to have about 10 ounces of paint for a 16 by 20. And I've got another uh, marking on here for a 14 by 18, which is a smaller size. So, but uh, we're going to give this a shot in one side of the cup. I'm going to put all blacks and a little bit of gold. And I've got a couple different, a couple of blacks here. I'm going to use black as my base coat too. So I mixed up um, a plenty of that. So basically black on one side, black and a little bit of gold. On the other side, I'm going to be uh, putting two different whites. I've got a metallic white right here. And metallic white always creates some very cool cells and things. And over here, I've got a warm gray, uh, which is uh, uh, Amsterdam warm gray, which is a really uh, pretty color mixed with a little bit of white. Um, there's a little bit of the Artist Loft soft body white in there. So, uh, but it's so it's like an off white, a metallic white, off white. Metallic white is the Artist Loft uh, metallic white and a silver. And that's just regular old. Artist Loft Silver. So I'm going to put all the whites and the silver and maybe a little gold. I'll put the gold uh, in each side um, a little bit. 
And the gold is uh, Liquitex Basics Gold. And I lightened it up just a touch uh, so it wasn't so uh, you know, deep and rich gold. I put a little bit of the metallic white in the gold just to lighten it up a tiny bit more. And uh, that's it. So those are our colors. We're going to have basically a white side and a black side. And I'm going to pour it on doing the waterfall uh, technique, which uh, if you don't know, I'll explain it to you. Let me move all these paints out of here. So the waterfall uh, technique, I hold the canvas at an angle. So I lift it up. And uh, let, me sh let me flip the camera and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So here is the side view camera. So I lift the canvas up and hold it with one hand while I'm pouring uh, the paint on the top section of the canvas and it runs down towards the bottom. And uh, as the paint is running, I'm kind of lowering the canvas down a little bit more and because I don't want all the paint to run off the edges. Um, so we have this big long ribbon of paint and it creates a very interesting, uh, a unique look and feel. This is also known as a, like an angel wings pour because um, you'll kind of see why as we pour this, although the split cup will create a different effect. But, um, and then I'll tilt it like normal and we'll end up with hopefully a very interesting, uh, fun, very contrasty black and white and silver and gold painting. So with that said, let's, uh, I'm going to flip back here to the top view and I will uh, layer my cup. And if you have any questions along the way, um, go ahead and throw them in the comments and I'll answer them as we go. I'll just check quick and see if there's anything in there. Nothing yet, so, all right. Well, let's get on with it. And, uh, oh, by the way, the black I'm using is uh, the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic Black, just the standard Artist Loft Black. So I'm gonna move these down out of my way. Okay, so let me bring my cup up here. And let's see, I'm gonna uh, layer the black first because that's gonna be very simple. So I'm gonna put the black in, uh, I'll put it on the right side. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of black in and then a little bit of gold. And then more black. So these are, I'm using much more black uh, than the gold, because I kind of want the black to really be dominant on that side. And by the way, this is just my easy uh, mixing formula. So two parts Floetrol, one part paint, uh, a little bit of water in some of the paints, and that's, that's it. It's very simple. And uh, so here I'm up to my five ounces. So that's one side done. And I'm going to just turn this around like that. And I think I'm going to start on the, the lighter side. I'm going to start with the metallic white. And then I'll put some silver in there. Then the um, warm gray color. And maybe a little of the gold. So I'll probably get maybe two or three layers of these. Um, so here's a little bit more of the metallic, white, silver. Just I'm going to just repeat the uh, layer order. You can you could make it any order you wish. It doesn't have to be the same. And here's some more of the warm gray, and a little bit more of the gold. And probably one more smallish layer of each color. Actually, I'll put a little more silver. So if you like this, the way this looks when we're done, um, you could use any colors you wanted to, of course, uh, any color palettes. Um, when I do split cups, I, I really like to uh, really keep a, a both sides very different. Oftentimes when I do a split cup or a uh, like a double cup pour or a kiss pour, I'll keep just one color on one side and have the other uh, side or cup uh, with all my layered colors. But I like to keep them kind of uh, very different and uh, as far as uh, value goes, so very dark and very light. 
in general. That's what I kind of usually do because I like all that contrast. So we've got our cup all filled up. I'm just going to set it aside for the moment and uh, put on my base coat. I'm going to move these paints out of here. And I'll see, I don't think I have enough black in this cup, so I mixed up some more. And let's see, I got my little palette knife. I see a question uh, from uh, Judy, oh, a couple questions. So I will try to answer those as I, as I spread my base coat around. <laughs> I think I'll need a little bit more, but let me start. So Judy is asking, let me move my mouse here. Um, Judy is asking, when you tilt and pour, do you uh, do portrait side up or landscape? Um, that's a great question. It, it really depends on the painting. Like, uh, uh, I guess you're talking about the final result. Um, I like both, actually. Uh, I like, I love the landscape uh, format. I like the portrait format. Um, both are very interesting to me. It depends on the painting and kind of what it's saying to me, like how I would uh, kind of, you know, um, decide which format it's going to, you know, reside in for the, the remainder of its life. Um, but um, but uh, I like them both a lot. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of square format or round format. Um, I know those are very popular uh, orientations and sizes, but to me, I just, I like more of a rectangular look. It's, to me, it's a more interesting, um, it's a more interesting shape and you get more interesting results with the uh, composition. And uh, when I'm actually doing the waterfall pour, however, um, and, and tilting the canvas up, I always tilt it up on the uh, I guess portrait side. So I'm tilting the shorter side up um, and have the paint run down the longer side of the canvas that it makes it easier to tilt uh, that way when we get into the tilting part. So maybe that was your question, Judy. I hope I didn't confuse you, but uh, great question. So um, let's see here. I've got another uh, question from uh, Meshka and she's asking what consistency are the paints? And uh, I'll show you that. Well, I, maybe I, I can show you that. But the paints are, they make a slight mound when uh, the paint streams off of the stir stick into the cup of paint. It's, it's my standard consistency that I use for most of my techniques, or most of the techniques I do. Um, and it can vary, though. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect for this technique. So I like a slight mound, but a little bit more of a mound is just fine. Uh, if, the, if the paint is just running straight into the cup uh, without making any mound at all, um, in my opinion, that's too thin. And you run the risk of the paints um, just kind of pooling all together and uh, making a lot of like a big muddy mess, perhaps. Um, let's see, I don't know if I have enough paint to show you the consistency and it'd be hard to do it in black. Um, but here, maybe I can, I have another color right here. This might be very, let me see if I can do it. Um, this is probably gonna be very hard to show you. Let me get a different color if I have one. This one's a little better. Okay, maybe this will work. Let me flip the camera here and I'll show you um, the consistency. I have to adjust something really fast. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So here's a, a different color. This is uh, some leftover paint I had from yesterday. But I'll see if I can show you the consistency. So this is, I'm getting a slight mound Hopefully you can see that okay when the paint, um, you know, streams off the, the stick. So that's the uh, consistency I like for uh, ring pours, straight pours, flip cups, floating cups, open cups. I use this for many, many um, 
techniques, this consistency, or something close to this. It doesn't have to be absolutely uh, perfect to this, but this is kind of what I like. So uh, hopefully that helps. Um, that's a great question though. So let me see now, I gotta readjust my camera. And I think that, there we go, okay, that's great. So I've got uh, my base coat on, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. So I'm ready to pour, um, let's see here. Now I'm going to, this is always tricky doing this because I'm gonna be holding the, the canvas up with my right hand and pouring with my left hand. Normally I do it the other way, but I don't have my camera over there, so. Uh, but that's fine. I've done this before. So I'm going to be pouring kind of right in the, the top section here in kind of a thin stream. And so hopefully I can keep my big arm out of the way and you can uh, see the paint puddle. So here we go. Let's give it a shot. So I'm just pouring in kind of a thin, thin stream. It's coming out rather quickly. So I'm just going to lower the canvas a bit as the paint runs down. And the split cup is fun because it keeps the, you know, the colors separated. Um, so you can do some interesting things. Now I'm going to put the canvas down now and get ready because it's I'm almost at the end. So if you have colors that blend together a lot and uh, don't work well together or don't mix well together, complementary colors especially, a split cup is a great way to work with those colors and they won't blend together as much. So like purples and yellows, uh, blues and oranges, uh, reds and greens, um, they're, they're great to use like with a split cup or a uh, double cup pour and um, you can keep the paint separated um, from blending so much and uh, you can get some very pretty paintings. So here we go. We have our all of the paint out of our cup and let me flip to the top camera now. And uh, it's looking pretty good. It's very split right down the middle, pretty much. But hopefully we'll be able to uh, put some, some more, uh, change the, the look of the paint and, and everything. That's what comes next is the tilting process. So let's get going here. I'm going to um, tilt forward. I'm just expanding the paint uh, puddle. And with the waterfall pour, it's a little bit different than a standard like ring pour or straight pour because I kind of go side to side a bit because the paint's already covering a bulk of the canvas. I just want to stretch it and cover as much as I can before tilting off the edges and corners. There we go. Now things will not stay so symmetrical once I start tilting. Um, I have to pick a corner to start with. And I'm probably gonna go over here to this top one. And uh, I what I want is uh, some of the whites to go up here and the blacks to come down here. I want a more interesting uh, design and pattern. So I'll be, I'll be talking about that as I tilt. So I love what the gold is doing in the black though. I think that's really cool. That's why I wanted just a little bit of gold in there to break up that big field of black. I think that's looking pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's tilt down on this one first and see what happens. So some of this stuff is gonna go away, which is just the way it works with uh, paint pouring. So I've got that corner covered. Now I'm tilting back. Now for this one, I think I'm gonna to go to this opposite corner. Um, that'll give me a little more variation, I think. So I'll get this one next. 
So I'm using my fingers to kind of just cover that tiny, that, that very edge of the canvas and tilting back now. So I'm liking that as long as I got all this paint down here, I'm going to tilt over this corner next here. There we go. Okay, so I'm liking I'm liking what's happening. We're 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 getting way more white now than black, but uh, we're gonna fix that in a minute. So we've got one corner left. So let's bring it all the paint back down here and finish our last corner. And with this tilting stuff. Um, you can take your time. I'm going a little quicker than I might normally um, on this demo, but uh, you can take your time with this. It, it doesn't have to be rushed. And you'll notice I'm tilting. Uh, I always tilt towards myself. I don't like tilting away from myself. Um, I like to see the paint and you can control the paint better if you have your uh, hand in the, this bottom corner. Okay, here we go. Almost there. All right, we got it. I'm going to let this some paint run off the uh, the end a little bit. There was like a little line I didn't love, so I'm going to let that run off there. And now I'm going to tilt back ag again a little bit. And so we've got all the corners covered, which I, so that's phase two of the tilting. Now I'm gonna just take a look at this and see if there's anything else I wanna do. Any other tilting? I'm, I like that we've got an interesting, uh, very interesting line. We don't just have a line down the center anymore. We've got a much more interesting uh, kind of jaggedy line. I think that looks very cool. So what I think I want to do, perhaps, um, I think, I mean, if, now at this stage, this is all about assessing the painting, seeing what you like, if there's something you want to change. If you can't see anything you, want to change right at this stage, there's nothing wrong with just leaving it alone. Um, I'm tempted to do that with this one uh, right now. Um, but I think I want to, what I think what I want to do is pull a little bit of this black down here a little more and a little bit of this white up over here a little bit more. Um, so I don't know exactly what is going to happen, but I'm going to try it out. So I think I'm going to pour off a little bit of this and then I'll turn it around and, and kind of pull, pour some off of this a little bit. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to just lift it up. And you know, these are all kind of smaller adjustments at this stage. Uh, it's hard to change like the whole composition around. So I'm kind of just working with what I've got. But there we go. I kind of like that. Now I'm going to turn it around. And I don't think I'm going to do exactly what I was thinking because the paint is going to, if I want to drag a lot of this white down here, it's going to drag all the white down. So I've got to be careful of that. I'm just going to tilt a little and see what starts to happen, but I think I might 
kind of just leave it be. I think I'm going to leave it be. So I'm going to I'm going to just fix one thing here. I've got some uh, I don't like this shape right here. It's kind of cutting in. So I'm going to kind of pull this off a little bit just to straighten it out. I'm going to just kind of tilt that little bit off. I'm going to turn it around and just kind of stretch it back down a little bit. Whenever I stretch over an edge, I kind of like to stretch the opposite way, uh, just to kind of get the paint moving back towards the center. And there we go. I think, I think I like that a lot. So I'm pretty happy with that one. And these are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself when you're pouring. Um, and I would always encourage you to um, not take the easy way out and just say, you know, tilt over the edges and okay, I'm done because you're uh, worried about what's going to happen if you tilt. I would encourage you to uh, tilt and see what happens. And in fact, in some paintings, I would say tilt way beyond what you think uh, you would like and go ahead and wreck the painting tilting it because that'll teach you a lot about the capabilities of the paint and stretching and and what you can do with it. Um, and that's just all practice, you know, because uh, there's a lot of practice that needs to happen with acrylic pouring. But um, I really like this one. So that is the split cup. You get these two kind of very distinctive uh, sides to the painting. But I really, I like that we poured a little bit off of this. We've got a much more interesting line um, than just kind of a straightish line running down the center. So, and I like the gold, what's happening with the gold up in the black. So I can see a lot of people are freaking out <laughs> because I was tilting. So, all right. Yeah, and of course, we all see these paintings differently. You know, what we like, what we don't like, what we think we should do. So thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> but uh, all right. And now the final thing you could do is take a palette knife and uh, just scrape the bottom of your canvas because there's a lot of paint underneath there. You can kind of just scrape it off. And I got a little spot I just touched up on the edge. Okay. So that's it. I scraped the bottom. We are ready to go. Here's a look from the opposite side. So, you know, deciding which way it will, it'll kind of be a painting, that's another discussion altogether. So, but for that, I usually, sometimes you know right away, like what the, what's the top, what's the bottom, or what orientation, like a portrait or a landscape. Um, now I'm not sure with this one yet, but uh, I think that's an interesting way right there. That's an interesting composition. Let's turn it, uh, this way and see what we got. And that's very interesting as well, having it in a uh, portrait um, orientation. It's very cool. So uh, we'll have to see, but uh, that's all. Usually I decide that stuff when the painting is dry, then you can uh, set it up and then step back and look at it and see what you like. Um, and because a lot of the time, one, one orientation will kind of speak to you. Uh, and you say, yes, that's the way I like it. And um, and that's usually when you can go ahead and sign it if you want to. So here's the uh, other side. See, that side to me looks very, uh, you know, like you'd expect it to be like this, kind of like a dark sky or something. So I kind of like it a different orientation. 
that's a very interesting one too. So for, I, I'm kind of liking the portrait uh, orientation with this one more so than the landscape. Landscape would be kind of, uh, that's what you'd think it would be, like a landscape. Um, I think this would be a cool way. So anyway, I'm going to turn it around and then I'm going to check and see if there are any. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way. I kind of liked it with the black on bottom. So I kind of like that a lot. I'm going to check and see if there's any questions that you might have. And let me flip back here. So it might be difficult to see. There's a lot of interest happening in the whites. Um, on camera, it probably just looks like more of a, like a big bl white blur. But we do have some cool cells happening. Uh, and you can, there's some whitish veins with the metallic white running through here. So there's a lot of, of cool um, effects and variation happening in the, in the light areas. Um, which is, I'm sure, difficult to see it on the camera. But, uh, all right, let me flip back here. And uh, I think we got a, a good one. So I'm glad I did this one. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I have done a split cup waterfall pour. Um, I did one, I've done one that was similar um, that, I, that I'm thinking of. But uh, it's a very cool, fun uh, variation of the waterfall pour. So I'm just going to check and see if there are any uh, questions. Sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop. Stop, please. Oh, man. I'm sorry I caused so much uh, stress during these demos. OK. All right, let's see, I'm looking for, thanks for all the great comments too. Appreciate that. Okay. And uh, Barbara says um, she has a tough time deciding on orientation. Yeah, it's a, it can be very tricky and difficult. Um, but uh, one way I like to do it is if I'm having trouble, some you know sometimes it's like oh this is the way I want it, uh, and it's very easy. Other times it's more difficult. What I like to do is if you have us anywhere you could hang the painting in your house, uh, you know obviously when it's dry, um, just hang it up, and just leave it there for a while, um, maybe a day or two, and then turn it, like uh, you know, you know ninety degrees, and then leave it and see what happens, uh, and then. And you kind of look at it on and off throughout the day. Um, and what I found is one of those orientations um, will just kind of pop out at you and say, oh, wow, that's the one I like the best. Um, so, but it can be, it can be difficult. You kind of have to like look, you know, be away from the painting a little bit and come back with some fresh eyes. Um, that can help you a lot um, looking at a painting. Another trick um, you can try and we use this one in a figure drawing or portraiture a lot is get a little mirror and stand with your back to the painting and look at it in the mirror and look at it reversed um, because you know the paintings take on a completely different uh, a completely different look when you look at it reversed and uh, one of those orientations might pop out at you. Um, that's a very easy way to see problems in like a portrait or a figure drawing or a, um, any kind of like an animal drawing. Uh, landscapes, not, not as much, but uh, looking at those in reverse, all the flaws pop right out at you. So this is a different type of thing. We're just looking at um, trying to get a different, um, a different view of the painting. And that can, that can help us decide what uh, way we like. Wait, 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 what way we like it best? All right. Cool. So lots of people like the painting, which is good. That's always good during the demos. Um, 
And uh, KC is saying that my cloud pours have been awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I love the cloud pours. And uh, Sonia is saying, uh, can I use two cups instead of a split cup? Uh, you could, but you'll need another hand to help you. Um, you'll need someone to hold, you know, if you wanted to do the waterfall pour, uh, you'll need like someone to help hold the canvas up uh, while you're pouring the paint with your uh, with the two cups. And you can definitely do it, uh, but you'll need a little help with that one. I haven't figured out a way to do that <laughs> without help. So, but absolutely, yes, you can do that, Sonia. And, and speaking about orientation, um, uh, Carla is saying take out a picture with her phone helps. Yes, that's a great way to do it too. Um, take a picture of your phone. Also, if you put the painting in one of those mock-up generators and then turn it in or make three or four different orientations with that, one of those can really jump out at you too. So there's a lot of ways to um, kind of see, um, um, you know, kind of help you decide which way you like best. All right. And uh, <laughs> Carl is saying, that's really why the hairdressers sit in front of you with a mirror. Yes, absolutely. Um, to get a different perspective. The mirror is helpful. All right. And uh, uh, Donna is saying, we're asking a question, what is the number or video with uh, the huge tilting table? Um, I think that was just a very, it was like a very short little clip, uh, but I'm gonna bust out the big tilting table again soon. Uh, to do some larger paintings. So I'll film those and uh, put those up there. Uh, and they'll be a little more involved. You can see the, the table. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big beast. Um, okay, let's see. And uh, uh, Naval is saying, how about four waterfall? How about four waterfall? I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Navala, um, but uh, maybe you could uh, rephrase that though. Uh, Lily is asking, "What is a mock-up generator?" Um, well, if you've if you're if you've been on Instagram, which you probably have, you'll probably see uh, all of these paintings in these beautiful um, uh, living rooms and dining rooms and uh, like these very contemporary houses. Well, those are all put together by using a mock-up generator. And the mock-up generators have all these images, um, kind of like clip art or stock images, and there's spaces in them for you to like pop your artwork in there. Um, it's all done online. There's a bunch of them. Uh, and the names escape me, I cannot think of them. I don't really use them all that much, um, but a lot of people use them. They're great to, uh, if, if you're selling your work, uh, give your work a very professional look. It's kind of like lifestyle images for your artwork. Um, they're very popular. If you just Google uh, artwork, um, lifestyle generator, something like that, I'm sure a, a bunch of them will pop up. Or maybe someone can mention one in the comments. And uh, Pat is saying, uh, can you prop up the canvas on a cup or something? Yes, you could. Um, that's a great, that's a great, uh, idea and you could definitely do that. Keep it uh, propped up. I'd, I'd recommend if you're doing that a very slight angle or not a, not a really steep angle because the paint will move too fast. Uh, I like to hold it, uh, because I can then lay the, you know, adjust the height. Um, but that's a great way to do it if you're doing the double cup pour. Um, but you just have to be you know, careful that all your paint doesn't run off the, uh, the bottom of the canvas. So, because you'll be holding those two cups, there's no way to adjust the uh, angle. But that, you could definitely do that. Um, I'd recommend maybe a slighter, you know, not as steep of an angle. And um, you could probably get the paint out and then, you know, pull the cup out before you, you have all the paint running off. It'd be, it's a little tricky. Like, this is a tricky technique. 
uh, just because they're holding stuff or using cups like that. Um, but that's a great, great comment, Pat. You can absolutely do that. And uh, awesome. Well, Nancy uh, did her own painting, um, which is cool. I'd love to see it, Nancy. Maybe you could share that in our Facebook group. That'd be awesome. And uh, Judith is asking, uh, how many uh, how many more types of cloud pours are there? Um, well, let's see. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with the cloud pour. I really look at the cloud pour as uh, you're adding one element to already existing techniques. Um, so the cloud pour, like the original cloud pour in my mind, is basically just a fancy, a fancy straight pour or a fancy ring pour. And we're using the cloud formula uh, just to modify our effects. But you could do the waterfall pour with the cloud formula. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think of, I just did a double cup cloud pour in our in our pouring night live. Did a double cup cloud pour. Um, what else? Uh, you could do all of these things and you could spin them out. I did a spinning one with just a straight pour and then I spun it to expand the, the paint puddle. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's any others that I would do. But uh, just you could let your imagination run wild, really. Um, and just use the cloud pour mix in different techniques. Um, you could use a cloud mixture in a funnel pour. That would give you some very interesting results. You could use a cloud mixture in um, a uh, dustpan pour. I think that would work well. Um, you could, and then there's a couple that I'm going to be trying. Um, like you could do it in. You could do it in an open cup pour or a floating cup pour, but your results are going to be a little bit different because just the nature of those techniques is different. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do, you know, let your imagination go crazy with the cloud pour formula and use it in many different techniques. I think you'll find that you'll get very interesting results happening. You could use the cloud pour formula with string pulls and chain pulls, and you'll get very interesting results. And, uh, and yeah, Novala is saying cloud waterfall. Absolutely. You could do a cloud waterfall pour just like we did right now. Uh, you could even just use one cup, you don't one layered cup and just use a cloud mixture in it. Uh, and you'll get, uh, you know, very cloudy effects. So yeah, you can do all kinds of things. Um, and, uh, let's see. And Lily says um, she tried a, a flip cup. It did not look like the clouds. Uh, it was still pretty though. Yeah, it's yeah because because you're applying the paint a little differently with uh, flip cups, open cups, and floating cups. Um, but you'll still get some interesting results. So it's not gonna, exactly like a cloud pour. Um, Donna's saying like a four split cup. Absolutely, any amount of split cups. You know, like a double cup or four cups, thirty cups. Um, they would all work. I'm not sure about like a bottle bottom pour, what you'd get, what the results would be, but you might get an interesting uh, cloudy painting with a, a cloud pour mixture and a bottle bottom pour. Be worth trying out. So, but um, hopefully it gives you a lot of ideas, uh, Judy, about uh, cloud pours. Now, some people will say, um, you know, there's the cloud pour, and then there's also the pearl pour, um, but it's a little different because the consistencies of the paint are are quite different. So, um, you know, all the all the ones that I just mentioned would use the same consistency as we just did here tonight with that slight mound. If you wanted to get into more of the you know pearl cells and pearl pours, um, you know, Sarah Taylor does amazing work like that you need different consistency. So I kind of look at that as a totally separate technique. So, so all right. Well, Novala's off to paint. She needs to paint now. So I hope you get a good one, Novala. Cool. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, last call for questions, if you have any. And, uh,
let's see. And if not, oh, let me see if I could, um, if you're interested in that, the split cup I was using, let me see if I could find it really fast for you. And you could go check it out if you wanted to. All right. Uh, I'm just going to drop, I got to get my keyboard. I'm going to give you a link to my uh, one section of my um, Amazon store that has a bunch of different split cups in it. And I'm going to throw it in the uh, comments right there. And so that'll, that goes to my Amazon, Amazon store. And I have a, like a flip cup or gadget section that has all the different split cups in there. So you can check them out. Sometimes they're out of stock. Uh, sometimes you can get, you know, alternative ones. Sometimes the colors are different. So they really kind of change a lot, but there's uh, several in there for you to um, check out if you want to. And uh, I just noticed on that page, there's a strainer pour or I have, I have strainers in there too. So a strainer pour might be an interesting way to uh, try out the cloud mix too. Strainer pour, bottle, bottom, colander pour. There's so many things to try. And uh, Lily is asking, what is the gray base? Oh, um, what is the gray base paper you have on the table most of the time? It's a craft paper I got. Uh, and the only reason I use it uh, is because it's a gray paper. It's not white um, because it's, it's strictly for the cameras. Um, so they don't get overexposed. Uh, if cause normally when I'm just painting with myself or for myself without any cameras, I have just white uh, freezer paper down and that works awesome. But the, the cameras get way too overexposed and it's hard to see the colors. So that's why I put a gray paper down. But, um, and, uh, but you don't need it. You really don't need it. I would recommend just getting freezer paper and using that. Um, this is what I, I love this stuff. It's, uh, it's Reynolds freezer paper and it's wide. It's, uh, and I've talked about this a lot, but it's 18 inches wide, which is, is really wide. Um, and it's got this shiny side and keep that shiny side up. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can let the paint dry on it and just peel it right off. You could scrape the paint up off of it. Uh, it's awesome. I just, I use it all the time. I love it. It's in it. It's inexpensive. You can find it at pretty much any grocery store. Um, so it works great for me. Now, if you're going to, um, if you want a gray paper, see, I don't love the gray paper to paint on because the paint soaks through it. And actually underneath this gray paper, I've got freezer paper. So, um, but it's strictly for the cameras and for filming. So um, I wouldn't recommend it for like your home studio. I'd, I'd highly recommend getting the freezer paper instead. So, and you can use that freezer paper over and over again if you like fold it in on itself uh, and just let it dry for a while. You can unfold it, just peel the paint right off. So it's it's awesome stuff. So I hope that helps, Lily. But it is, I do get this stuff on Amazon. It's 48 inches wide and it's just like a, like a school uh, craft paper. So Navala's off to paint. So good night, Navala. Um, and uh, Carla's saying um, she hasn't found the freezer paper in Florida. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, you could always check Amazon, I guess, but I wouldn't think um, I would think it'd be everywhere. Wow. Um, well, good luck finding that stuff, Carla. I hope you can find it. And um, yeah, Barbara likes that paper too, so she uses a freezer paper. It's awesome. I love it. I, I, I think it's better than a silicon mat um, because it's way cheaper. Um, it's fantastic. So you could do uh, dips in the freezer paper, um, which, are, which is really fun. So you could just pour a bunch of paint on the freezer paper, dip your canvas, pull it off. Um, it works great for that. And uh, yeah, Carla is saying she found parchment paper, but it's thin. Yeah, parchment paper is a kind of a different a different thing, a different animal. Uh, it can work, but it's not as good. 
um, freezer paper is where it's at. So I hope you could find that, Carla. Maybe you could check uh, restaurant supply stores. It should be a common item in most like restaurant supply stores, I would think. So, okay. Cool. Well, I don't see any other questions. So um, thanks so much for joining me for our uh, waterfall split cup demo. It turned out pretty nice. I like it a lot. Um, it's very simple, you know, monochromatic palette. So, but uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Maybe give one of these a try if you uh, have the urge to paint this weekend. And uh, again, you could also do the same thing with a you know, double cup or kiss pour technique. You could use a cup to um, elevate your canvas, which is a great idea. Um, so there's multiple things you could do. You could just do a, a, just a double cup or kiss pour just on a flat canvas, the standard one, and get very interesting, fun results. So, all right. So um, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you um, have a great weekend and uh, I will see you again next time. So have a great uh, weekend, a great week. There's football this weekend. I'm excited. So uh, go Packers. Woo. So, all right.